Well, nearly everything you do in the airline industry um, and the, in Qantas can be analysed and we can use lots of information, a lot of data. We have a lot of data in Qantas. So if it comes from you as a customer, as an example, we have 10 million frequent flyers. We have a lot of information on you as a frequent flyer, how often you travel, you know, whether you shop at Woolworths, whether you have an ANZ credit card or a Westpac credit card. And we can design our services then as a consequence very precisely. We can design our advertisement very precisely. We can design our communication very precisely with that information. There's an engine sitting right outside here. Uh, the information then we collect on engines, it's unbelievable. You know, the new technology um, sends huge amount of information about the performance of that engine, performance of that aircraft. Um, GE and Boeing have really uh, massively upgraded the amount of technology and data that comes from aircraft. To such an extent, the aircraft tells you when there's something wrong. And a big one that we're now investing millions of dollars in at the moment is a new revenue management system. And how does that work? It's basically pure mathematics, I think, uh, NASA scientist was the guy who came up with a lot of the uh, mathematical models that airlines now use in predicting overbooking levels on aircraft. And it's a pure optimization model. An empty seat is the most perishable product in the world. Once that aircraft goes, that seat can never be recovered. But there's a cost if you overbook a flight in having a denied boarding and a passenger that's not happy. Since I've been CEO in the last six years, we've had a global financial crisis, we've had earthquakes, we've had uh, tsunamis, we've ended up having um, engine problems, uh, operational issues outside of our control with the Rolls-Royce engines. There are a lot of events that occurred. We've had record levels of fuel price. We've had recessions in various economies. So you know something out left field could occur in the business, and you're always then in your risk, uh, risk management, you're identifying as many risks as you can. You're always worried about black swan event that you haven't picked. But the risks you can identify is what's the best way that you can mitigate them. Fuel is always one the airlines cope with. So one of the things airlines do is hedge fuel. Why do we hedge fuel? Well, we give us certainty in what the fuel is going to be so that we can make our business cope with that fuel at any period of time. Now how will the airline of the future be different from what you're running today? I think the 787s and the A380s have been in recent times a step change and there's more on the way. Boeing are looking at the 777-8X aircraft which in, uh, which in theory could do Sydney to, to New York direct in one stop and that could change the amount of routes Qantas can add into the United States or around the globe given how far we are away from everywhere. So the air, aircraft technology is hugely, uh, is hugely disruptive and if you're not at the forefront of it, and it is an opportunity, you know, you could say some people can use the term disruptive, we say opportunities because these are things that we want to be at the forefront of and things leading the way in. There's uh, also a technology of big data and known the customers, I think that's going to be key. You know, 10 million loyalty members, nearly one in every Two, two households in Australia, having uh, that information designing the product for the particular customer's needs and recovering when things go wrong. You know, I think somebody told me there's six million moving parts on an aircraft, things can go wrong. We have so many touch points, things can go wrong in disruption, an aircraft going unserviceable or weather or something causing you a problem. But how you recover is really key to customer loyalty and using that information and that uh, really to get that right. I don't think there's anything that will change the need for air travel. I don't think we're going to have a Star Trek beam me up Scotty. I don't think we're going to have uh, video conferencing that's going to replace air travel. Uh, but I do think air travel um, has to respond to taking the, uh, the, making it more convenient and more particularly designed for customers and that's where we think the big focus will be. Well, we've been at the, the forefront of this now for some time in the aviation industry because IATA, which is the industry body, uh, it's the collection of every airline around the globe and it meets, I'm on the board of IATA, I was chairman of IATA a few years ago, and IATA got the whole industry together and says, what is the airline industry going to do for its impact on the climate and what can we do to minimise that and what targets and what processes will we put in place to take it as a sector industry 
big problem. And the, the outcomes of that were phenomenal because we got the whole industry to agree to it. And it was that we would, as an airline a group, reduce our emissions by 1.5% every year. Um, we would then focus in on getting to uh, sustainable fuels across the, across the industry so that we could actually then um, also get ourselves in a position where we take substantial amounts of emissions out and we would move progressively to new technology that would help us doing it. We also put a whole series of initiatives in that IATA helped all airlines around the globe with, how they, how they do various things that can save on fuel burn and save on emissions. Now the, re the reason for it, it's good business practice as well because our biggest cost is fuel so every percent that we save on of fuel is a percent we save on CO2 emissions as well. Uh, sustainable fuels obviously is a big thing we've been working on. We've done a number of, um, of test flights with sustainable fuels, working with Shell and working with the CSIRO on testing them out. And we, we know we can get the same power. The biggest issue was with a sustainable fuel, could you get the same power as a jet kerosene? And you can. Actually, it was a bit more powerful in terms of what provided. And it was the same engines and the same aircraft that can run it. Now we're working through a plan about how we can build that up over the next decade, how we can get good production here in Australia, how we can get the supply to the airports. And there's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of key issues about getting that sustainable. But we're working through that. That'll have a big impact once that's that's developed. There is a range of, of sustainable fuels. The ones that we used on the test flights was actually cooking oil that was recycled. And uh, we've had algae being used. We've had um, crops being used on it. British Airways, I think, tried the Troper Fisher method, uh, which was the uh, waste and rubbish that okay. was the Germans used in the 30s. Uh, to produce fuel. So there's technology out there that can be used for us. There's plenty of it in this space.